In this video, we'll explore how ion propulsion works, from the propellant it uses to how ions are created and accelerated. But before we dive into ion propulsion, let's start with the basics. What is atom and ion? An atom is the basic building block of matter, the smallest unit of an element that retains the chemical properties of that element. In general, an atom consists of three subatomic particles, protons, positively charged particles, electrons, negatively charged particles, and neutrons, neutral particles. In a neutral state, an atom has an equal number of electrons and protons. For example, an oxygen atom has eight protons, eight electrons, and eight neutrons. However, atoms can lose electrons and become positively charged, or gain electrons and become negatively charged. These charged atoms are called ions. So how does ion propulsion work? Ion propulsion generates thrust by ejecting ionized gas at high speed. The most common gas used for propellant is xenon. That's because it is a noble gas, so it can avoid unwanted chemical reactions. More importantly, xenon has a high atomic mass, which means each atom carries more momentum at a given velocity, producing greater thrust. Additionally, xenon requires relatively low energy to ionize, which makes the system more efficient. In an ion propulsion system, the propellant is fed through a channel that injects neutral xenon gas into an ionization chamber, producing negligible thrust at this stage. To generate thrust, the xenon gas must first be ionized into plasma, an ionized gas, allowing us to accelerate the atom using an electric field. Ionization is achieved by bombarding xenon with electrons, which knocks electrons off the atoms, creating positively charged ions. These electrons are produced by an electron gun that uses the principle of thermionic emission in a hollow cathode. Thermionic emission is the release of electrons from a heated metal. These electrons, once emitted, are guided into the ionization chamber by a combination of electric and magnetic fields. In this stage, the electron path is still inefficient because it rarely hits the xenon atoms and can directly hit the chamber, which can lead to erosion. So the system uses magnetic rings to help confine the electrons within the ionization chamber. The magnetic field from these rings forces electrons into circular paths, keeping them inside the chamber longer, which increases the likelihood of collisions with xenon atoms. This makes the ionization process more effective and efficient. Once we have positively charged ions, they are accelerated using an acceleration grid system consisting of a positively charged grid and a negatively charged grid. The strong electric field between these grids accelerates the positive ions to very high speeds, propelling them out of the thruster. After the ions are accelerated, they pass through a second electron gun that acts as a charge neutralizer. This device releases electrons, preventing them from being attracted back to the negative grid or other negatively charged parts of the engine. These concepts might sound like cutting-edge sci-fi tech, but ion propulsion has been around for decades. Back in 1998, NASA launched the Deep Space One probe, a mission designed to test futuristic space technologies. Its ion engine fired for over 16,000 hours, quietly pushing the spacecraft's speed up to 15,480 kilometers per hour. Then in 2007 came the Dawn spacecraft, which used ion thrusters to visit two massive asteroids, Vesta and Ceres, within a single mission, something that is extremely challenging for chemical propulsion. If you enjoyed learning how ion propulsion works, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more deep dives into amazing technologies. Thank you and see you.